Forest compounding plan represents steps to use compounding techniques by reinvesting a fixed percentage of profit on initial investment and increasing the profit exponentially. These are the steps of Forest compounding plan and they include Step 1. Define initial investment as account balance. Step 2. Define percentage growth per time period. Step 3. Define time period which will use in compounding plan. And step 4. Define forest compounding trading strategy. Let's check what is forest compounding plan investment. Forest compounding plan includes investment you will bring to forest trading which will, you will grow. Growing that investment will be the compounding calculation which you can check in the forex compounding calculator. The investment in a compounding plan can start from $1000 or $10,000. That depends on your ability to invest money. If you do not have money, then you can try a compounding plan with a demo account. You can open demo trading account and test compounding plans with virtual money. If you have money, then you can start forex trading with real money. If you can invest $1000, you can check what you could expect to make after a certain period. Here is a graph where, we, where I have put $1000 investment through 30 time periods. The return on $1000 is calculated with compounding calculator and I have used a 10% return. The second variable is percentage return in forest compounding plan. When you have defined the initial investment, it is time to define which percentage you will try to reach on each time period. In the graph, I have put three different percentage returns so you can see what you would get if you decide to have 1% return is gray line, 5% return is brown line, and 10% return is blue line. You can see that 10% has exponential growth after 30 time periods. 1% and 5% have small growth which is not so attractive, but it is conservative return which some traders like to see. If you imagine that you invest $1 million and put 5% return, you would get 4 times after 30 time periods. Here are the results from the graph. 1% return gives you $1,437.85. 5% return gives you $4,321.94. 10% return gives you $17,449.40. You can see that 10% return has exponential growth with a return of 1,744%. 5% return has growth of 432%. 1% return has growth of 143%. Forest compounding plan time period. This is one of the most important parts you will need to decide what to use. The compounding time period defines how long you need to wait to get a desired outcome. I have used a time period of 30 something. Something here can be trades, days, weeks, months or years. Let's check what would mean if I use 30 trades as a time period for compounding plan. 30 trades means you would open 30 trades with profit and at the end you would end up with money on your account. Those 30 trades can be in a day or a week. That depends on you how fast you can achieve 30 trades in a row. Here is the condition to have 30 trades in a row profitable, not one losing. Which is less likely to achieve because if you can do 30 trades in a row with profit with 10% return, you would not be here reading this. So, with 30 trades in a row without losing trade, you would end up with $17,449.40 on your account if you use 10% profit on each trade and with $1,000 initial investment. If you select days as a time period in your compounding plan, then you would try to achieve results in 30 day time period. That means each day you would need to have 10% of profit. In one day you could have more trades open, 1, 2, 3 or more, but at the end of the day you would need to have 10% of profit. If you do not have 10% of profit, you would not be able to achieve results from the graph. Day as a time period gives you more freedom because you can open more trades per day and make a strategy to reach those 10%. 
Check this. If you have 10 trades per day and each trade you open has a risk of 2%, but on each trade you try to get 4% of profit or more, that is a risk to reward equals 1 against 2. Let's say you use 4% of profit and 2% of risk. That means if you open a trade and that trade becomes bad trade, you would end up with loss 2%. 2% risk on bad trade equals to 2% of $10,000 equals $200. Then you open a second trade and that trade becomes profitable. You end up with 4% of profit. 4% profit is 4% of $10,000 is $400. Let's say you have 5 bad trades and 5 good trades. You would end a day with 5 multiplied with 2% risk gives you 10% of loss. 5 multiplied with 4% of profit gives you 20% of profit. And totally you have 20% of profit minus 10% of loss equals 10% of profit. You see, with risk to reward equals to 1 against 2, you would need 5 good trades with 5 bad trades to reach daily target of 10% of profit. This gives you a lot of space to make errors in trading. Compared to 30 good trades in a row, this time period makes much more sense and makes it more reachable. If you have a week as a time period, then you would have more freedom to make more bad trades because you could open more trades per week. The goal is to reach 10% of profit per week. And then you would need 30 weeks to reach the target from the graph. 30 weeks is equal to 7.5 months where you would make $17,449.40. Now it's up to you to decide which time period you would use. One note here. I will not cover the monthly and yearly time period. The analogy is the same as described for a week time period. If you use a monthly time period, you would need 30 months to reach the target. If you use a yearly time period, you would need 30 years to reach the target. I assume that it would be too long to wait, but it's, it is up to you to decide. As a final step, you need to decide how to use all steps explained before to start trading by using a forex compounding plan. Strategy should include these steps. Step number one, define currency pair for trading. Step number two, define lot size you will use. Step three, define stop loss and take profit levels. Step four, define a risk per each trade which is a risk to reward ratio. Step number five, define a time period you will use in forest compounding plan. Let's now check each step so you know how to use this compounding strategy in forest trading. You can use this strategy if you want, but first test it on demo account before trying on a live account. Currency pair for compounding strategy plan. If you are a beginner in forest trading, then you should learn how to choose currency pair for trading. Each currency pair has its own characteristics and you need to select the, those that are good for trading strategy. In this article, I'm not showing which trading strategy to use. You can use technical analysis, fundamental analysis, price action analysis or any other. But one of the currency pairs that are good to trade at the beginning is the EURUSD currency pair. It has moderate volatility and you can see trends which are good to follow to make money and to make less mistakes. When you have a currency pair for trading, you can move to the next step, and that is to define the volume or lot size you will use in each trade. Volume or lot size defines how much each pip will be worth. Is one pip equal to $0.1, $1 or $10 or more? If you want, you can learn what pip is and how to calculate the pip on this website. If you use your USD currency pair, then you do not have problems understanding the lot size for each pip. If you use micro lot size, you will have one pip equal to $0.1. Here is a table with other lot sizes so you know which one to use in trading. Remember that lot size should be defined with the risk you will use on each trade and how many pips you will go for in each trade. I will explain this later with an example. To define stop loss and take profit you need to have a trading strategy. Strategy defines entry and exit levels for each trade you open. In the Forex trading platform, you have two fields where stop loss and take profit are defined. Check the image here.
risk and the reward ratio in compounding plan strategy. Now you have come to the one of the most important steps in compounding plan strategy, and that is to define risk to reward ratio. Risk to reward ratio defines how much you accept to lose per each trade and how much you will make per each trade in percentage. If you define risk to reward as one against two with 1% risk, that means you plan to lose 1% on that trade if the trade is a bad trade. If that trade is positive trade, then you would make 2% of profit on that trade. You should plan to have at least risk to reward equals 1 against 2 as a minimum. If you put 1 against 3, that is even better, because each positive trade will give you 3% of profit. Let's see two examples, where one trade is bad trade and one is positive trade, with risk to reward equals to 1 against 3. First trade on $10,000 account will give me 1% of loss equals to $100 loss. Second trade is positive with 3% profit, which gives me $300 profit. After two trades with one bad and positive, you end up with $200 of profit. That means you can lose two more trades in a row to be equal. To have $10,000 on your account, just like when you have just started. Time period in Forex compounding plan. Now it's time to define the time period. Will you watch each trade as a time period or you will set a time period to daily? Daily time period means you need to have a return at the end of the day defined by the percentage. If you have set 10% as a target per day, then you need to finish the trading day with 10% of profit to follow Forex compounding plan. You can have several trades per day and they can be bad trades and there can be good trades. Final result should be to have 10% of profit. If you select a weekly time period, which is also ok, you would need to finish the week with 10% of profit. This gives you more room to open more trades. You have 5 days to get 10% of profit. You can reach 10% in one trade and wait the rest of the week, because you have reached your weekly target. That way you can rest and prepare for the next week. It is important not to be greedy and trade just to trade to avoid becoming bored. I would use a weekly time period because it gives more freedom and the pressure is not too strong. Pressure can lead to over trading which at the end gives you account wipeout. With a weekly time period, you can open one trade and let it run for the whole week. Now it's time to show you an example, with all steps explained now, so you can see how that looks. Let's check 10 pips a day compounding strategy. So, in this example, I want to show you how it looks when you use a 10 pips a day compounding strategy where you define lot size, a risk to reward ratio, and then open the trade. You will see how much you can make after a certain number of days by using a 10 pips a day target. The profit each day you make with 10 pips, you will add to the initial balance and then calculate next day return. I will use 1% of profit per day as a target. So here is summary what I will have. Step number 1 currency pair euro USD. Step number 2 lot size. I will show this below. Step number 3 stop loss and take profit. Step number 4 risk per each trade is 1%. And step number 5 time period is daily time period. While I have a currency pair, and that is EURUSD, I know how much is micro lot per each pip. One pip on micro lot gives me $0.1. Account balance is $1000. So I'm targeting 1%, which is 1% of $1000 equals $10. Now I will calculate the lot size I will use to have 1% risk on each trade. Because risk to reward is set 1 against 3, I will target 3% of profit on each trade. 1% risk of $1000 is $10. If I am targeting 10 pips on each trade, I will need only one trade positive. To get $10 target, which is 1% of $1000, I will need to have 10 pips, which is equal $10, and 1 pip is equal $1. That is equal to one mini lot size, that means I need to open an order with 0.1 lot size in the forex trading platform. On a day one, when I open a new order with one mini lot size with stop loss of 10 pips, I will risk 10% per trade. 
but I have put the risk to reward ratio to 1 against 3, which means I'm targeting 30 pips with each trade. So if I open 3 trades per day, I can have 2 bad trades and 1 positive trade to reach the daily target of 10 pips. In the first trade, I get 10 pips loss. In the second trade, I get 10 pips loss again. And on the third trade, I get 30 pips of profit. Totally this gives me minus 10 minus 10 plus 30 gives me 10 pips. With 10 pips of profit, I have earned $10. When I add profit to account balance, I will have $1010. This amount will be used to open new trades the next day. On a day 2, now I will use the same stretch to open new trades. The goal is to reach 10 pips of profit, which will give me 1% of profit. 1% profit of $1,010 is equal to $10.1. Now I will need to calculate the lot size to get $10.1 of profit. This time I will not use one mini lot size, which is equal to 0.1. Let's calculate the lot size. 10.1 divided with 10 pips gives me 1.010 per pip. 1.01 per pip equals to 0.101 a lot size. This is one mini lot, which is 0.1, plus one nano lot, which is 0.01. If you are using the MetaTrader 4 trading platform, then you will not be able to use 0.101, because MT4 accepts only micro lot size as the smallest unit size. If you use an Oanda broker, then you can use nano lot size, which is 0.001. Oanda uses terminology of units instead of lot size. So one lot is 100,000 units. One mini lot, which is 0.1, is equal to 10,000 units. One nano lot, which is 0.01, is equal to 100 units. So if I open three trades as on the first day where I have two bad trades and one positive trade, I would get this. First and second trade gives me 10 pips loss. Third trade will give me 30 pips of profit. And totally I have 10 pips of profit. With 10 pips of profit, I have earned 10 pips multiplied with $1.01 .01 gives me $10.10. Now, when I added this amount to the account balance from day before, which was $1,010, I will get a new account balance, $1,020.1. On the day 3, now, now I will use the same strategy to open new trades. The goal is to reach 10 pips of profit, which will give me 1% of profit. 1% profit of $1,020.1 is 10.10. $201. Now I will need to calculate the lot size to get $10.201 of profit. Let's calculate the lot size. 10.201 divided with 10 pips gives me 1.0201 per pip. 1.0201 per pip gives me 0.10201 lot size. This is one mini lot plus two nanolots. So if I open three trades as on the first and second day where I have two bad trades and one positive trade, I would get this, totally 10 pips in profit. With 10 pips of profit, I have earned 10 pips multiplied with $1.0201 is equal to $10.201. Now when I add this amount to the account balance from day before, which was $1,020.1, I will get new account balance and it will be equal to $1030.301. When I trade like this for 10 days, you would get these results. After 10 days with 10 pips compounding with 1% risk on each trade, you would end up with 10% large account. In 2 weeks you would make 10% which is a quite good result. And those 10% were with 3 trades per day where you can have 2 bad trades and only 1 positive trade. Imagine increasing percentage of profit each day from 1% to 50%. In 10 days, you would end up with $57,665.04 on your account. Check the graph here. And that is all from this lesson. 
I hope you like it. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe. See you next time.